We're uh, fishing out of North Point Marina, charter boat confusion. My friend Chauncey, Glenn Shirley, we're working, uh, we were to be working today for Kings and Cohos. One of the primary baits we fish out of here is called a Howie fly. So it's, it's a big tinsel fly on a tube. This one happens to be what we call an aqua green pearl. This one caught us a nice coho today. I'm going to show you how to rig one. What we start off with, we start off with some leader material. Fish are getting a little bigger right now, so we're using 50 pound big game. Normally we use 40 pound test on these flies. Not for strength necessarily, as for the action that it imparts to the fly. The stiffer line tends to make the fly work better. Because there's more resistance on it, the line and the, you get a little yeah, whipping action. A little more that broomstick okay, effect. Sure. You know, sometimes people want to go light tackle, like on spoons, to let that spoon or that crankbait, uh, crankbait, crankbait impart the action. Mm -hmm. On a fly, sometimes you want to get that heavy whip. Okay. And that's what, you know, that's what it does, because it's going behind these big frying pan dodgers. This is a size O Lure Jensen with uh, prism tape, silver dodger. This is what we use it behind. These have normally been known for lake trout dodgers, but we use these for salmon. They do catch lake trout, but they also do catch salmon very well. What we'll do is we'll take and we'll, uh, they come pre-tied most of the time. Most of the time I can get the leader through there real easily, but now that the camera's on me, I'm having a little trouble. Of course, it always works that way, I want you to know. Yeah, I hate when that happens. Okay, first things first, you put the fly on there. You want to have a good assortment of uh, hooks and beads, that's, that's key. This time of the year with the feistier fish, we're using these uh, must-add 4X strong hooks. They're uh, not too big, this is a size 2, I think, Glenn. Right. And it's, uh, it's a sharp hook, and they don't straighten out on the fish. Bigger fish sometimes end up straightening hooks. Now what I'm going to use here is I'm going to use two clear beads and two green beads. Little uh, size eight. Uh, what do you call these? Just uh, beads. Beads. Now, what is the significance with the beads? Does it give more color, or an attractant, or make a noise? Uh, it gives a little bit of extra color, but what it also does is it takes the fly and makes it larger by extending the length of the fly to the hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to put five beads on this. You can put anywhere from. You can put no beads. You can put two beads. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, I think the norm is four beads, but. I mix it up. Every day I try something a little different. Something works today, may not work tomorrow. 50 pound test, you don't have to get too fancy with the knot. A simple clinch knot is fine. Okay, I see what you mean because what you're doing is by adding these beads, once that leader line goes through the top of the fly, you're giving that hook a little bit further back. So if the fish comes up and hits it, or if it's a little bit of a short strike, you're actually changing the length of the lure that you're using. They're going for the back of it. There right. you go. There's, there's the fly right there. See that comes, the, the fly comes all, all the way into the hook right there, but the hook trails back a little bit. What happens is sometimes they short strike it, they're going to get hooked better. That's the less, the less beads you use, the more into the fly the hook is. The more beads, the more it trails back, kind of like a trailer. Now what we're going to do is, I have my cleaning table, I have little notches cut in here for lengths of flies. I'm going to do it right between those two notches. I'd say that's about 23, 24 inches. We're just going to tie a little surgeon's, double surgeon's loop there. That's what we call that. Put a loop in the end of it. Leave a nice tag end, and if we take and we measure it right here, we got 23 and a half inches. So, Perfect, ready to go. A lucky guess. Take it, put it right on the dodger. Now here's one of the keys. We're rigging this one because we caught a big plastic bag today. It was a good fight. And what it did is it tangled the living daylights out of the rod and broke off one of these fine little items here. The key to this rig is a sample or a ball bearing swivel. If you don't use a, a good little larger ball bearing swivel in front of these dodgers, they, they spin violently. They'll spin the line, twist it, and just snap it right off. You, you can't just use one of these little uh, cheapo swivels. You need a fine ball bearing swivel. You'll take this and run it behind a downrigger anywhere from 5 to 25 feet. Today we were running this one 25 feet behind, or maybe even 30 feet behind a downrigger, whereas some of my other downriggers were only 5 feet. You need to mix it up a little to get different presentations and also to keep from getting tangles. Okay, quick question for you, Ken, Bob. Uh, a lot of people see these Dodgers in the stores, and they see them on the back of Charter. What, do, what is the Dodger for? What okay. is the significance of it? Uh, 
it imparts action to the fly. If you take a look, it's got a little scooped end right here, mm -hmm. and it's a little more sharp on this end. It goes through the water, and it goes like, at real slow speeds, it goes like this, back and forth. It wobbles? It just wobbles, and the fly tends to just lollygag around. Good for lake trout. Salmon tend to kick the speed up a lot, not always, and it tends to spin violently. That's when it twists up the line. That's why you need the ball bearing swivel. Okay. It takes that fly and just flips it around and keeps jerking it. What this signifies is a big fish or a school of feeding fish to another fish. They see this flash from the sunlight and they see they think there's feeding going on and they, they key in on the area and then they see this fish with chasing a minnow. Even though it's going backwards, they don't notice that. They just see this minnow and they go back and they slash at the minnow. A lot of the times you'll get quick hits and there'll be misses they'll slash and they'll hit it here and they'll get snagged or something in the face, it'll rip right off. Majority of the time, they're gonna take it and gobble the whole thing right up. You got the hook, hopefully you land it. Okay. We had a couple losses today because uh, for one reason or another, they didn't get hooked real well. Hey, but we tried and that's the important part. Absolutely. Okay, that's Captain Bob on the Confusion Charter Service. We'll be right back with more of the Prairie Sports. And this outdoor tip, Captain Bob from Confusion Charter Service, is going to show us a couple of interesting things. First of all, about the line on one of these big game reels, but also how to keep things from getting too tangled up on your boat. Bob, why don't you show this to us? Okay, what we got here is you got you got a seven foot ugly stick rod. It's a light action tip. This time of the year, the fish are a lot bigger. Ugly sticks are real sturdy rod, but they still have soft mouths. So you got that light tip. Got a Shimano Charter Special reel spooled with either 20 to 30 pound test big game line depending on you know what type of fisherman, what type of action you want to impart to the line. This time of the year I'm using 30 on some of them with these big dodgers, 30 pound big game. One, one nice tip I could recommend to people, a lot, a lot of boats you'll see driving back to the harbor and they've got the rods like this in the rod holders and the dodgers are just flopping in the breeze and the flies are just spinning. Everything's bouncing out there. It's all bouncing in rough water and what happens is your flies get all twisted and tangled, your lines get all twisted on the way out to the fishing spot or on the way back. Instead of brutalizing your equipment, a good friend of mine out of Chicago named Furface, he's a real good fisherman, taught me this technique. You just take the line, you stand it straight up so there's no pressure on it. So you don't have tension bending it over. Exactly. Straight up. You take and you start, hold this boat out like that, you start twisting the line slowly, get that dodger parallel to the, the rod, twist it a little more and then take this loop and put it around one of the line guides. Now you can sit in there and go through rough seas, it's not going to fall off, it's going to stay tight to the rod. It's also easier for storage to put it away in the cabin. Just It saves your equipment, you don't have to constantly retie things because you goofed it up on the way out. Actually, that might be, not even be a bad idea to use on some inland lake uh, equipment because what you're going to do is when you're using different uh, crankbaits and things, you can hook them up just like that, spin them around, so this way you can have them on board if you're going from one place to another. Right, and, and also keep the hook around the back of the reel, less of a chance of getting hooked that way too. And plus, I always know where the hook is. I, I don't grab the reel right there, I'll grab it up on the rod knowing that I always have the hook in the same spot. Okay. So it keeps it nice and neat and it's less places to tangle up and you know, hooks are always snagging everything they can in a boat. It's snagging everything they can, including people. Yeah, well, <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> okay, well thank you much Captain Bob and we'll be back with more of the Prairie Sportsman. Am I in your way? No. No. You're fine. All right. Right here. Look at that. Look at that. You know, that's a coho. That is a mature coho. Look that's a coho? No, yeah. no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got it. No. Woo, baby. That's, that's a, all over the tail. That's a coho? That's a coho? Can't be a coho. No. Well, that's a kid. Boy, you look like a coho the way you're styled. I say, if that's a coho, we are going to quit this right a, now. That's a football. Right it's a four-year-old king. It's a mature king. He's not a monster, but he's a hefty fish. Oh, yeah. It's a male. Uh -huh. a big kipe jaw on it. Yeah. yeah it's on a hook. Uh, hold that baby up there, John. No, like, like I got it. Yeah. Get it in there tight. Yeah. 
Nice fish, John. Nice one. Good job. Move over to that side of the boat there. Okay, 16 pounds, huh? 16 pounds, nice one. Yeah. Good job. Not bad. For lake trout, and we caught a Chinook. Three year old wow. fish. Or another double, maybe. <laughs> well, I tell you what, this almost gets to be work when you get this much line out. Uh, you know, this guy thinks these captains lie. I'm telling you. Lift up and reel down. Or what, what was the one in the cane mutiny? Captain Queeg. Bob about 500, 500 plus feet. Oh, uh, mine just got off. Okay. Did it? Leave it. Go take the other one. Give me that. Here. Give me that. Can I roll to my right? Okay. Roll to my right here. Yeah, that's it. Five minutes. All right. I did a remote release on mine. Well, keep this one or let this one go. Nice looking fish. We we won't call it a nice fish. It's a keeper. It's a keeper though. Big fish. Pretty colored. Ooh. Don't, don't back up. No, no, no. You gotta lift up. Very nice. Very nice, Chauncey. This Captain Bob guy must know what he's doing. What do you think? <laughs> New boat. Hey, look look at the, look at the color on that on that fish. Yeah, this is cool. That is gorgeous. That's on a slider? Yeah, that's slider. That's a slider. Ten feet above the bottom. Look at the markings from a lamp or something. Almost all of them are right by the lamp. Right? Almost dead. Keep it to the right, though. Alright, keep it to the right. Yeah, there's a uh, line coming in on the left. This feels like a decent fish, although maybe the dipsy's not. Looks to be a female, but just got to this lantern. Yeah, she dumped. Could be a male. It's hard to tell sometimes. That big bent jaw kind of looks like a male. That, that, my friend. You're the professional. Nothing I love better. I know you do. Okay. Moving back. Chauncey, I've never seen fishing like this on the lake. Well, I can't. It's many years since I've seen fishing like this. Let me put it that way. There's no way you've seen it better than this. No, thing. no. There's no way it could be better. We no. can't keep the rods in the water. You can't keep the rods in the water. 20 fish on already. We've Here. been fishing 35 minutes. Yeah, end of October. We've been fishing 35 minutes. We probably had 20 fish on already. We've released, what, five? We've got five in the box. I accidentally caught a king that was in the wrong spot at the wrong time. He hadn't read the book. Kamikaze king, he hit our slider. We're running uh, spinning blows. We're running howie flies. And diamond kings. Plenty of action on the diamond kings, too. And we're running diamond kings, number five. They simulate the big... Uh, bloater chubs that they're biting. They're, they're eating the juvenile bloater chubs. They're about this, this size, so they're about the size of the number five diamond kings. Here's the number five. It's kind of beat up, but they like it. They like the size of it. They like the silver plate. We're fixing a slider 10 feet above the main rig. i show you how it wouldn't work. Let me get the rod. Do one right here for you. How long you been cranking, Glenn? I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. Oh, there's the fish. We better get the net. Glenn's got a fish coming. Yeah, hold off on the instructional video for a minute. And you do have to put a few rods in the water. Land my fish. Well, this one's been on so long, I think we better put him in the box.
What do you think, Bob? About a seven pound fish, eight pound fish? Yeah, we'll use a little on this guy. Okay. No, he's, he's... All right, we'll uh, hold him here for... Uh... No wonder it took me so long to reel him in. In the box. I always want to scoop them when you're netting them. Never want that bag to drag across the hook or I'll pull the hook right out of it. Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen a lot of fish knocked off Never happened at to that me point. Though. Never happened to me. No, you're a professional, though. Yeah, no, the rest of us are just happened. amateurs. You wouldn't you wouldn't get the net wrapped around the downrigger either, well, would you? I wouldn't if that camera wasn't in my face. Oh, I see. It's Blame it on the cameraman. got to get up closer first. This is a, a green crinkle howie fly. When they raise these fish in the hatcheries, Howie stands there with his little green crinkle Howie fly, kind of like a subliminal suggestion. He waves them over them, so when they come out in the lake, they're looking for that green crinkle Howie fly. Except I think most of these fish are look naturally the, look, hatched. Look, look how much he liked that, all the way down his throat. Let's see if we can get that hook out of there. Glenn, you want to open that cooler for I me? can do that. There you go, Glenn. Bob, we've got the box just about full. Good Lord, look at all those fish. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. You haven't been fishing at all, No, not really. Unbelievable. Reels to fish with. They're really not do a nice job. Okay. Yeah, you've got a great set of tackle on this. I think I just lost yeah. it. Just fell off. Just fell off. These fish have a habit of either coming in or falling off. That's kind of a normal. Reference. Makes sense. There's another one on. Oh, I can't. Yeah. One turning, you want to keep that rod all the way to the left. As far okay. As you can. And I'll stop turning the boat, straighten it out, but that rod is 520 feet behind the boat. I swore I wasn't going to pick this rod up again. <laughs> well, imagine, imagine yourself on a football field. You got the end zone at one side. You got to drag the fish across to the end zone and then all the way back to probably the 30-yard line before it'll come in. And I won't get lucky and this one get off. Yeah, no, that one will stay on for you. Yeah, he's in good shape. Hopefully we'll... You gotta be careful not to grab the gills when you do this. Also a very good idea to keep your uh, hand away from their teeth. Looking good. Uh, once they Catch you about, next year. Once they get about 20 or 30 feet down, they get into that, that second atmosphere where the pressure increases by double, their air bladders shrink dramatically. Then they become more neutral and they keep swimming down. Yeah, they keep. Nice thing about this time of the year, the water.
water is a lot colder and it's not as stressful on the fish. If you try and release them like that in the summertime, they all die. This time of the year, they're a little more aggressive to get back down there to the spawning grounds and the water's a little colder. You gotta give them kind of a splash though, a little bit of a help so they can get down that initial 20 or 30 feet. Otherwise, that air bladder will stay inflated and they'll just float belly up on the surface waiting for the seagulls. Yeah, and it's a shame to waste them. Alright, we got another fish going here, guys. Go figure it. Right there, Glenn. I'll take it from you in a second. No. I really want to. Let me take that one. You got it? Oh, he's there. Maybe you'll let him. Hey, what if he's. Go ahead. Oh, he's there. He's there. Yeah, he's still there. Go ahead, let the captain reel one in. That's a little one. You give me the little one. Sure. I'll take the big ones. We're back in the harbor. Let me tell you something. It? Did this oh, work oh, out? Oh. Did this work out? It was every bit as good as he said. We put you on the mark. We put you on the line, my man. True. What about, what about that big one that got away? What about the big three that got well, away? Was a bunch of, <laughs> there was a bunch that got away, but that was all right. That we did pretty rod, well. That one rod kept losing them. This. I don't understand it. This I don't is amazing. Know. Look, Look at this. this. Look I at this. This is heavy! <laughs> Alright, hold them out toward the camera. They look bigger when you're Yeah, on. yeah, really. Well, you know what, guys? We can't do that long. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, you know what? What let's a just, great day, Bob. We got, we, got, we got this one king, the kamikaze king. He hit a slider. Yeah, he, he was lost. The king down here, yeah, he was just he showed was confused. up. He's a beauty. Grandma's going to like him. <laughs> Alright, let's put it on the rack here. And we'll okay, talk let me get, let get my shoes out of the way. Get your shoes, get your boots. You had to step in there, my great friend. Great day, great day. What a Robert, tremendous day. Huh? Good job, Glenn. Tremendous day. <laughs> Buddy, you did a great job. Glenn? Your chanceness? <laughs> Your chanceness. <laughs> Glenn, you, hey, I'm not kidding you. We had a lot of fun. A couple of points, though. We showed you at the top of the show, and I think you've been able to see just by looking around how much fog has oh, been out tremendous. here. Tremendous. And really, if we didn't have coming in was actually, you know, Captain Bob, he didn't care. He's, I know where I'm going. But it was scary to me because we couldn't see the break wall. Yeah, he was sleeping the whole way and scared. <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, you, we got you literally to, couldn't see the break uh, wall until you were within 20 yards of 20 shore. 20 yards. I mean, and that's how thick. And someone with a smaller boat, really, this is not the little, little boat fishery. This is a big, yeah. you know, charter boat Almost fishery. Almost a charter boat fishery. Yeah. Or a very yeah. experienced big boat captain. Five rods, and it, did you see that one time we had what, four four fish on one time? No, we, well, had, we had that rods. double. We had four, the first the first pass. We had four rods going, but there were five fish on. Right. One rod had the double. That's so right. There was two on one rod and four uh, three other three rods. Three other going. rods going. Two lake trout at one time. <laughs> Who's got the luck? What's first? the lotto numbers yeah. this week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> that was great. Really, I can't tell you. And once again, you know, confusion charter out of Winthrop Harbor. You're going to be pulling out for the winter pretty soon. When do you go in, Bob? Well, we start fishing early in uh, late late March. Late March for the cohos. Mm -hmm. You know, the cohos work around the shoreline in the springtime. But late March through uh, October. you got to call us up. We'll be down. Well, you know I'll do we'll, it. We'll be down again. What's the phone number if anybody wants it? 888-929-FISH. Uh, 1-888-929-FISH, huh? My, my dime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Great Glenn, day. once again, thank you. Oh, and thanks, guys. Glenn Shirley from Ed Shirley Sports. Great company, great bunch of people to work with. Good time. My friends, give me that five. Thanks, John. Way too much fun today. My arm Thanks, is sore. Man. Excellent. Excellent trip. Thank we'll you. We'll see you next week right here on the show. Yeah, baby!